cards. So, you know, grab bag. Here we go. She got the Kuropi. I think that's what just happened. Okay. So answer the call. Um, I know that you guys can't see this card, but just describe it to you because everybody loves that. Just an auditory lesson. Uh, so it's really of this beautiful young woman and she has roses in her hair and this beautiful like kind of cloak that almost feels like a cloak of protection. And it's interesting to me because it's covering her shoulders, but it's open on like her heart center. Uh, and she's kind of sitting almost up perched it feels like like in between all of these crystals and clouds and there's a lot of like water and waterfalls and so it just feels like she's kind of in this place of um stillness but what is around her doesn't feel still it feels very much alive um but it feels as though that she's kind of gone to this place of like, where can I best hear what it is that I need to hear? Um, especially if this is the idea of like answering the call, you know, sometimes it's really hard to do when everything is so loud and everything is so fast. And then sometimes when we we hear the call and then we don't like it, and so it's almost like we we do the opposite, which is like everything we can to drown it out. And I don't want to say that everybody always knows what their calling is, um, but I would say at least in my experience and when I coach uh, folks and when I work with them, when I do energy readings, I feel like people do always no, that doesn't mean that you know what, also, if you're watching this, I do have my eyes closed. That's just because I can um, transmit messages easier. So if you're like, why are her eyes closed? I don't have like something in my eye. Um, I just, it's how I focus. Um, okay. Um, I, yeah, I find a lot of times when I'm coaching people that they, they always know, meaning like you may not know where it's going to end up, but you know, theoretically what the first step is. And, and the reason that I know this is because typically when I'm giving somebody information, like from an energy read or something, and then I, my eyes are typically closed and I open them and I look at them and I say, does any of that resonate? And I'm grateful to say at this point, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're like, yeah, that's spot on. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's not that I knew something you don't. It's that I've been able to um, articulate something back to you that perhaps has felt too loud or, or, or again, we've been running from it, but it's like, but you knew. You always know. And sometimes we need to make, this is the thing that I'm doing in my own life of like really trying to get disciplined. Sorry, I have like a hair somewhere that's in my mouth. Okay. Oh, what a charmer. Okay. Uh I'm really trying to get dedicated about having moments throughout my day that bring me back to my intention so that I can get really clear on hearing that call. Because here's what I mean. Some people, yeah, you may be in a phase of your life right now where like you're single, you work from home, you have like an altar set up and you like, and it's just you and like, you may have the capacity right now to have a space where you meditate for 30 minutes in the morning and then you journal for an hour and then you draw about what you journaled. And like, you know, I say it somewhat condescendingly, but mostly just because like that sounds like a fucking dream. Um, <laughs> but you also may not be in that that space. I'm, I'm not in that space right now where I have that opportunity to do so. So again, in, incorporating this idea of the low-key luxury is also – how can I come back to the calling? How can I create moments within my day that bring me back to center, that bring me back to that place of, you know, heart, heart open and, and listening for what that calling is because the, <laughs> that's interesting. I, I feel like the call a lot of time also, it, it feels like it comes in um, like scam likely, <laughs> meaning like scam likely will call you over and over and over again, you know, 
And it feels the same way where like your, however you identify, whether it's like you have your relationship with God and uh, in, a, in a more like traditional uh, wording or language, or you are, again, how, whatever you identify in the words in which you connect to your higher power and whatever that means to you, or maybe you don't even necessarily believe in a higher power yet, but you are developing your, your personal development and whatever that means to you. The way I identify it is the universe will try to get the message to you in as many ways as possible, but a lot of times it's not going to come out and go, I'm the thing. I'm what you're supposed to hear. It's not going to do that. It needs you to work a little bit. And that's the thing. Like I, It's the only time that I kind of get on people sometimes when they come to me because if you come to me to want to work, whether it's through an energy read or coaching or consulting or whatever, even as a friend, you know, my friends that come to me and it's like, whoa, oh, hum, ho, oh, hum, or like this, you know, it's okay to, to console, like console yourself and, and, and be there for yourself and love on yourself when things are tough. I'm not saying like tough love. I mean, certainly love on yourself and, and give yourself grace, but when you become the victim, it's like, I just, for me, without having to choose my words wisely, like I don't have energy for that. I don't have time for that because there's nothing I can do to help you because you already feel as though you do not have any power. And I'm not interested in, in helping you find it in that way. I'm helping, I, I'm interested in helping you strengthen that power. And so one of the ways in which we can do that is reconnecting with it. I find it really interesting. Uh, Rami Youssef is a great actor, comedian, uh, and stand up. And uh, he's a very uh, spiritual and religious guy. He's Muslim and he talks about, you know, they pray multiple times a day and he has um, a lot of really interesting uh, things to say about that. And again, I'm butchering his beautiful thing that he shared. But in a nutshell, he was like, one of the reasons that we go back to pray, I believe it's five times a day and I apologize if that's not correct, but um, let's say it's five is because how quickly we forget Meaning how quickly throughout the day we forget what our intention is. We forget that we are God, that God is within us and that we almost have to go back to stillness that many times in a day. And it's not because, and I'll add this, it's not like, oh, we're humans, we're such pieces of shit, like, oh, the flesh or oh, the ego. It's just as simple. I think especially in the world that we live in now, it's loud, it's busy, and it's more and more and more and more. And so I loved that share from him so much because the idea of like to really answer the call, sometimes like you got to go back in, you got to go back in and check in with that to really get aligned. And um, so that is everything that I have on that card. And let's see what uh, the book says. Um, here we go. Answer the call. Your guidance is divinely guided. You are being called to answer the call of your soul. It might be scary. It might not make sense, but if you trust your soul's yearning, you will live a life beyond what your mind could possibly imagine. Answering your call, your soul's calling is not a one-time thing, uh -huh, but rather a lifelong dance. Deep down, you already know what you long for, what your soul yearns for. Whatever you're called to do, that is your calling. Don't overthink it. Don't wait per for permission. Just say yes. Most people are waiting for a step-by-step -step plan before they take the first step, but intuition doesn't work like that. It takes faith and courage to answer the call of your soul. And that's why most people don't do it, but you are not most people. You are in exactly the right place to answer your calling now. You don't need to know the whole plan. You don't even need to know where it's leading. You just need to take the next step. No one has ever had the complete perfect plan. There is no end destination. There is no right or wrong way to do it. And you do not need permission from anyone else. Sometimes the more resistance we have around answering a soul calling, the more important it is for our soul's growth. Yeah. One sentence that I want to go back in here, which is, it takes faith and courage to answer the calls of your soul. I am still in that process of, can he be more brave? Can he be more brave? Can he be more brave? To me, it feels like people who love a cold plunge. Oh, do they love it? But that idea of like, okay, can you step in? Can you step in? Can you step in again? Can you stay in a little bit longer? 
Can you go up to your knees? Can you go up to your hips? Can you go up to, you know, like how can you grow in that way? Because I think a lot of the ways in which I've quote unquote failed at different times in my life is because either ego wise, I felt like whatever the step was in front of me, I was above that. Well, I'm not going to go and be a writer's assistant for $11.99 an hour. Look at how talented I am. I'm not going to do that. Because I've already decided, oh, I'm going to do all of these things and look at all this magic I'm going to create. Uh, okay. Do the thing that's in front of you. Shovel the dirt. Because there is such spiritual lessons and actual of the earth lessons to learn in the step that's in front of you. So that's so much of the time why we miss out because we've, we see this big vision and we know what it is. And it's like, great. You, you, you know, it's so classic. You got the blueprints, not everybody else. And I hate to break it to you, but as magical and wonderful as you are, so is every other being on this planet, whether they recognize it or not. So when you hold yourself back, because whatever the first step is, whether it's because you think that you're above it, which is what's happened to me, or it feels too overwhelming or too scary of like, well, I couldn't do that. But I guarantee you, whatever the first step is, is actually the easiest part, despite it feeling so overwhelming. But I, I would just love to share with you that the more that I've taken these steps bit by bit by bit by bit, each step that you take after that gets easier and easier. And I was thinking about this the other day where I was like, you know, as I'm still grieving kind of what I thought my career was going to look like. And I'm in this place of like, okay, how is this all going to like, where is this going? You know, like so much of my check-in time is going, okay, <laughs> I am blindly trusting just all of you. Okay. My guides, my ancestors, the moon, we're really just uh, hoping that this all works out. Okay. So let's start putting some of these pieces together. Shall we star beings? Okay. So I understand that fear of going I'm following each step and I don't see where they all connect yet. But I was thinking where I'm like, well, what would be the opposite? What a boring fucking story if it's like, and she went on the audition, got the thing and never looked back again. Like, that's boring. It's boring. Like if somebody was like, oh, watch this show. And you're like, oh, how many seasons is it? It's like, well, no, it's only one episode. What do you mean it's only one episode? Well, they go and then they like get the thing. You'd be like, well, that's boring right? Like we want multiple episodes. We want cliffhangers. We want, you know, to know where the story is going. We want peaks and valleys. So it's like, allow your life to be that. You don't have to know. And I know that's so difficult to let go of, but when you do, when you let go of that need to know where it's going, you can engage in it in a way that feels I think that is that idea of like, you know, when you always hear of like co-create with the universe, co-create with the universe for years, I've been like, I'm still not even sure what that means. And now I'm like, Oh, that's what it means. I hear the calling. I just do the thing. Like that's it. It's air traffic control. You know, I'm up in the airplane and they're down going, okay, great. Do this, do that, do this. I don't need to be in the plane going, ah, okay, where are we going? Okay. It's like, no, just tell me where to go. Okay. I'm going to do the thing. And then, and then it creates this sense of like, fun and excitement. Cause you're like, I don't know where this is going to lead. And I do, you know, it, I also do feel like your, your, again, your guides or your God, or, you know, however you identify, there are breadcrumbs along the way to go. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. You're doing it. And I don't need to define those for you because I know if you're listening to this podcast, you've had those before for yourself where you feel them and you're like, I'm in the right place. It's just that, that feeling of I wish there was a word for it of like, it is just, it's not bliss, but I, I think in, in the human experience, which just constantly feels, uh, dare I say fucked, it's those brief moments where you're like connected. That's the only word I can think to describe it. Connected. All right. 